Hi there, freaks and sickos. I'm Clark Macbeth, and welcome to my campaign. Once upon a time, the universe was a small, glowing thing of very hot energy, and then it expanded outwards. And after billions, billions, or is it millions? After a really long time, uh, Earth happened, and then after another really long time, people happened, and now we have the Minneapolis uh, City Council um, demanding that Uber and Lyft pay their drivers a living wage, or a higher minimum wage, just a higher minimum wage, at least as much respect as someone working at Walmart is what I am getting from this ordinance. And in response, Uber and Lyft have decided to leave. In fact, they've been threatening to leave with any, any change in policy other than being completely unregulated, and that is simply unacceptable. There are Republican politicians trying to override this, but that's not going to happen because they don't have enough votes to do that, and it would just be preemption. But here's something that really caught my attention. Over here we have a proposal for Uber and Lyft to stay gone, and for Minnesota to take over and nationalize that industry. I think you guys are really overthinking this at the state level. I really do. But let's hear them out anyway. City's customers and rideshare drivers for Lyft have started getting word that the company plans to pull out of the metro area May 1st. The company is threatening to do that after last week's Minneapolis City Council override of a mayoral veto of an ordinance that raises driver pay. According to CARE 11... An email sent to drivers contends they'll ultimately earn less. If that was the case, then Uber and Lyft, you guys, you guys, could have given the raises. But you're lying. And even your drivers know that you're lying about that. Like, this is an ordinance to raise pay, and saying that it will do the opposite, I'm sorry, people... Workers are just not going to fall for that at face value anymore. You really shouldn't fall for anything at face value anymore. Let's continue. So while creating a, quote, unsustainable situation for riders, Uber has also said it will quit operations in the metro area, including the Twin Cities Airport, May 1st. There is a bill in the Minnesota legislature that seeks a statewide solution, though. DFL Senator Omar something. Fateh is the author. He's on the line. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. As you know, uh, you've got the Fry veto that's been overridden, but yes, many folks remember that the Governor Walls vetoed a similar bill last session. There was a working group formed. How much pressure is now on the state to act on this? Uh, well, we heard Everyone from wants uh, the drivers state to act um, on this. last year and going into this session I don't that, know why. Uh, they're seeking just a minimum level of protections I, uh, and compensation I in which they say is the least that they're, that is acceptable so that they can pay their bills in Minnesota. Um, last year, we were able to get it across the finish line, um, but with the veto, a task force was formed. So I think right now, um, all levels of government, um, are we are all... Um, uh, on the same page that something has to get done this year. You know, when wide, ride share companies first started operating, it was considered something uh, that drivers did part-time. When did this become a full-time job? And do you think that's adding to the issues with the ride share company's business model? The business model? model sucks. Well, what we learned from uh, the report also is that uh, roughly a third of the drivers Uber are the ones are providing not even uh, 70% of the rides. So there's a loyal the task uh, at all. Uh, group it's of drivers that are going in day in and day out, and this is their sole source of income. This is their yeah, income yeah, that they use reason, for uh, paying the rent, they're paying on the for stock their market, they needs, their food, uh, but also so a the wages that they make uh, are stuff that they use um, to pay for working on the job, for their car, their insurance, um, their, their maintenance. From what's basically um, trust so fund we babies see this as a way to um, help them uh, in drivers. a way where that 
they're able to c- continue functioning as drivers, but also for people pay rent. giving rides. Yet the rideshare companies say that this minimum compensation in Minneapolis taxi, is just going to be too high, taxi drivers and at it all. looks like it's uh, comparable to your bill language. Do you worry about the possibilities that there could be an end to statewide service? Zero um, I don't chance. believe so. They um, want I believe it was in uh, Magazine where they uh, labeled the TNCs as uh, the ride shares that cry wolf. And also in the report by uh, the Alliance that hoping. they don't believe that they will leave. There's been other times when in other states and localities they have threatened to leave and they have not. So I don't believe that they will either. Um, the price that they want to, uh, th- the price that they want for not leaving is to not play by the rules. Um, everyone else plays by and we cannot accept that. Also worth noting, uh, Uber and Lyft are unregulated everywhere in America and pretty much the whole world. And Minnesota is seems pretty intent on following through and being like the first place in the world to put its foot down and say, Uber, Lyft, you're on our turf. Businesses do not get a free ride here. It's not like we are a state that hands you a bunch of money just because you feel like you're owed it, because you look like you're special enough to be owed that kind of money. That is not how Minnesota's economy works at all. We are not New York. We are not California. If you want to run a business in Minnesota, you have to do that by Minnesota rules. And in many ways... Minnesota and its Small Business Administration will help you. Like, we want a company to start small and grow big. Which makes it a problem to attract big businesses. But when it comes to small businesses, new businesses, uh, the state is going to favor that. And we're like, one of the few states in America that does that, along with a loose, uh, sparsely populated string of red ones and also Vermont. You know, places like Wyoming and Idaho, they want to have a small business succeed there, but there's hardly enough people and resources to have that happen. But in Minnesota, we have a state that's willing to help small businesses compete against the big guys. You tweeted recently about you and several other state senators brainstorming on a state-run and developed rideshare app. Why should the state get into this business? Yeah, absolutely. So this is something that came about um, towards the end of last session. Um, This is actually one of the ideas that came from uh, the discussions for many of the drivers. Um, In the original piece of legislation, um, there was a fee that would go towards the resource center that would generate millions of dollars. And with that, we learned that um, if we have a state-run app um, and we are able to pay the drivers a livable wage and give them a considerable portion uh, of each ride, and we're able to take a small fee from each ride as well, we're able to generate millions of dollars for other areas like public transit, which will benefit um, all of us as a whole. You're going to have uh, transit Senator, in Minnesota. Senator, with the first deadline this week, committee deadline, how, um, what, what's, what's the future of your bill, do you think? Well, yes, the, the first deadline uh, is going to be uh, this Friday, but we've been working with leadership um, every single day uh, to hash out any of the differences uh, in the bill. Um, we have commitments that uh, we can I... go past the deadline. Um, it's just a simple way of going through the rules committee uh, to have that extension. Um, but I hope to see something, and we are. Uh... I don't. I don't think any of this is necessary, though. If you want my opinion on this, it's really simple. Just let Uber and Lyft lead, leave, and there are. There's a long list of people who have been wanting to c- compete against these two companies and get leverage over them for a long time. We don't need to make a statewide app. We just need the competitors to come in, and they're all promising to pay better than Uber and Lyft. It's just that everywhere else in America, Uber and Lyft have dominated. And here, we would have a case where they're gone. What happens now? Well, the technology to make Uber and Lyft could, quite frankly, be made by 
a kid nearby at Weaver Lake Elementary. I'm I'm sorry. It's just like the amount of work in making the app itself that gets people to share their vehicle so that others can ride with them. That's that's a that's a trivial task at this point. And that would be the biggest barrier. Like, I, I'm sorry, the CEOs of Uber and Lyft hardly do any work at all. And this isn't an opinion I just throw around to make myself look good. No, I really mean it. Like, it, it, Uber and Lyft are just, at the end of the day, they're payment processors that are also pretending to be legitimate taxi services, but they're not. They're just payment processors for someone who wants to independently accept Uber and Lyft have rules. They have rules that their drivers have to follow or they lose access to that platform. So they're not really dealing with independent contractors at that point because there is no independence. Do you see what the problem is now? I mean, I'm sure the state and Minnesota IT services can cobble something together, but I would just rather let the free market do its thing. And in a truly free market, we the people have a say through our government in how that's run and just let it happen. Let Uber and Lyft go and... Here we go. Look at this. This is from some professional business publication, I'm sure. But we have Cabify, Snap, Via, Grab, Bolt, Gojek, OLA. There's some competitors that want to be more friendly to women. And... The city made its voice heard, and there's all these companies who are willing to white knight, follow the rules, and do what they need to do. I mean, I mean, let's let's have another look at this uh, Care Eleven video. Let's see, because town is on tonight. Rideshare companies. Uber if and Uber and Lyft leave. Minneapolis St. Paul will not be without rideshare. Maple Grove will not be without rideshare. Um Lyft say they will leave Minneapolis on May 1st if a new ordinance They'll just be without Uber and Lyft. Effect. That ordinance They will just be without Uber, Uber riders, and Lyft. Something Uber and Lyft say would cost riders too much money and isn't sustainable. But as Heidi Wigdahl explains, several other companies are now making sure they're ready to get you where you need to. There we go! Heidi? Randy and Julie, I spoke to the CEOs of two companies who say they're ready to come to Minneapolis. One of those companies in power. Let this says happen! Since last week's announcement of Uber and Lyft's plan to leave, they've already seen a couple hundred driver, drivers sign up in case it comes here. And if Uber and Lyft fall through with their plans, Empower anticipates thousands of drivers. A possible Uber Lyft exit has companies like Rides excited. It's just kind of grown and take off. Founder and CEO. Let this happen. Do not disappoint this man. In 20 regions across the country. But they started in Austin, Texas, where Uber and Lyft in 2016 left under different circumstances, only to return a year later. Ten companies came in very quickly, filled the void, and uh, I don't know that the city of Austin really felt uh, felt that much of a difference. Uh, now, of course, when the big companies came back in, they just started knocking off the mom and pops. With rides, drivers pay a monthly subscription. Don't let that happen. Do not knock off the mom and pops. Let the Is mom and pops take over. Let the competition happen. Let the prices first. go down. Let the wages go up. Side, we could be ready if we if we got the approval that we need from the city. This is all you need to know. This is all you need to hear. This is all you need to listen to. 
Just let him go, man. There will be someone else to take over. And for the people who are disabled, stop concern trolling. You have nothing to be concerned about. You just need to find an app with a different name that works basically the same, and the original patents on Uber and Lyft, I'm sure, have already expired. And from the from the state level, um, we could be in there in a matter of two weeks starting to onboard drivers. But he says it's going to take a few companies to Don't wait. avoid, like Empower. You know, in D.C., almost a quarter million riders Empower? have used the platform. Founder and CEO Joshua Sears says their yes. main market is in the D.C. metro area. I think they're known for being good to their drivers. But Empower has hit some bumps in the road. In December, D.C. issued a cease and desist letter saying Empower was not authorized to operate in the district. We're not a regulatory body. You know, we sell software just like Open Table sells software to restaurants. You can Sears operate here, though. Provide the technology. Drivers work for themselves and keep 100 percent of the fare. You know, I think yes! there's a lot of things that we can do and tools that we will provide to drivers that will help facilitate any regulatory body's ability to oversee and regulate those individual drivers. And Empower now, I spoke with the city about is this honest with what it is. It is a payment processor. Licensed in Minneapolis to operate there. The city says so far and no new company has submitted an application for a transportation network company license. Once the city receives an application, it takes two to six weeks for approval. Both companies told me they've reached out to city council members, but are still waiting to hear back. Randy. All right, Heidi, thank you. So that's my opinion on Uber and Lyft. Let the competitors fill in the void and take over. The state doesn't need to freak out. Governor Walls does not need to freak out. Okay? Republicans don't need to say anything. They're not going to fix any of this. They're just going to go back to the way things were, which was not sustainable. And you have companies like Empower, which are just a payment processor and a rating system, and they're not telling drivers what to do. And you um, just call their bluff. As a city council member for Maple Grove, I wouldn't need to do anything because there wouldn't be any need to bring Uber and Lyft back because there are already better alternatives and we deserve better than Uber and Lyft in Minnesota. And they already exist, and they're willing to come in and take over. You don't need the state to have its own service. I'm not going to get into that discussion. But it's pretty clear that uh, the problem isn't the rules, it's Uber and Lyft. And if they don't want to they don't wanna play by those rules, they can take their ball and go somewhere else. And we'll all be better off for it, apparently. I'm Clark Macbeth, and I approve this message. And as always, subscribe if you like, and share if you care.